Let's look at an example of a third order differential equation. d cubed x by dt cubed plus d squared x by dt squared plus dx by dt plus x equals 4. The initial conditions are t equals 0, at x equals dx by dt equals 0 and d squared x by dt squared equals 3. So we Laplace transform this to give us the first term here will be s cubed x bar minus s squared x0 minus sx1 minus x2. Second term will be s squared x bar minus sx0 minus x1. And the third term will be sx bar minus x0. And the final term there will be our x bar equals the 4 becomes 4 upon s. So we've seen that before. We've just added in an extra term here, the d cubed x by dt cubed. Then we set our initial conditions. We know that at t equals 0, x equals dx by dt equals 0, and d squared dx by dt squared equals 3. So we're able to set for our x0 will become 0, and our x1 will become 0, and our x2 will become 3. So we set this, these values in the equation above, and we're going to get our s cubed x bar minus the 0, minus the 0, minus the 3, so that's these terms here s squared x bar minus the 0 minus the 0, that's these two terms, and s x bar minus the 0, which is this term here. So finally, if we gather all the like terms in x bar, we'll get this equation here, x bar s cubed plus s squared plus s plus 1 equals 3s plus 4 all upon s. Now this term here, s cubed plus s squared plus s plus 1, well that can be written as s plus 1 times s squared plus 1. So therefore we can write the x bar equals 3s plus 4 upon the s from this term here and also the s plus 1 times s squared plus 1. So we're just taking this here which is in this form down below under this line here. Okay, So that whole thing then can be split into 3 upon s, s squared plus 1, plus 1 upon s, s plus 1, s squared plus 1. So you can multiply these out again to your set for yourself and convince yourself of that this line here is in fact true. Now, if we were to take the first term here, the 3 upon s squared plus 1, so we're wanting to use partial fractions in order to split this one up and also split this one. So we'll start off with this one first of all. So this one here can be written as 3 upon s times s squared plus 1 is the same as a upon s plus bs plus c all upon s squared plus 1. So if we multiply throughout both sides by s times s squared plus 1, We'll be left with 3 equals a s squared plus 1 plus s times b s plus c. We then take coefficients of s squared, coefficients of s, and coefficients of the constant c. So, but when we talk about the constant c, we're not talking about this c here. We're just talking about the coefficients of the constant of this equation here. Okay. So that's going to give us a plus b equals 0, so a we equal minus b. Coefficients of s, well that just gives us c equals 0. And the coefficients of the constant tell us that 3 equals a, and also we're able to say therefore that b must equal minus 3 because a equals minus b. So that means that we can rewrite that out as 3 upon s minus 3 upon s squared plus 1. Okay, so that there is our expansion of this here. So therefore we can take out the common factor of 3 and it gives us 1 upon s minus 1 upon s squared plus 1. So that's the first section done. What we want to do now is we want to expand out this second section here. So we have 1 upon s, s plus 1, s squared plus 1. We take out a factor 1 upon s plus 1. And that's going to leave us with 
1 upon s times s squared plus 1. But we've already seen this one, we've just done this one above. That's the same as 1 upon s minus s upon s squared plus 1. So therefore, if we were then multiply out this one out, we'll get 1 upon s s plus 1 minus s upon s plus 1 s squared plus 1. So we'll take these terms here and we'll split these ones up. So the 1 upon s times s plus 1 can be written as 1 upon s minus 1 upon s plus 1. And this term here, s upon s plus 1, s squared plus 1, we're going to use partial fractions again on that to split that one up. So that's going to be equivalent to a upon s plus 1 plus bs plus c upon s squared plus 1. So we can find the values for the A, the B and the C using partial fraction expansion. So I've just rewritten this line out without the brackets. And then we multiply throughout both sides by S plus 1, S squared plus 1 will give us our A, S squared plus 1 plus B, S plus C times S plus 1 equals S. We then take coefficients of our S squared, our S and our constant term C. So S squared will give us A plus B equals 0. Therefore, A will, will equal minus B. S gives us B plus C equals 1. And the constant term gives us A plus C equals 0. So this give, tells us then that 2B must equal 1. So B must equal a half. Therefore, A must equal minus a half. And C must equal a half. So finally, that's going to give us our minus a, a half upon S plus 1. Plus S upon 2 plus a half all upon S squared plus 1. Now what we'll do is we'll gather all of the terms together. So x bar will equal 3 times 1 upon s minus s upon s squared plus 1 plus 1 upon s minus a half 1 upon s plus 1 minus a half s upon s squared plus 1 minus a half 1 upon s squared plus 1. So multiplying out the brackets and getting all the like terms together will give us 4 upon s minus a half 1 upon s plus 1 minus 7 upon 2 s upon s squared plus 1 minus a half 1 upon s squared plus 1. So if we do the inverse transform of this now, it'll give us the value 4 minus e to the minus t upon 2 minus 7 upon 2 cos t minus 1 upon 2 sine t. So you can see that we use the same method here for the third order as we did for the first and the second. It's just the algebra gets more and more difficult as you go along. So we'll only do one more example of this and that'll finish off our third order differential equations. So thank you for listening and goodbye.